Officer Tippett. Eddie Barker talked to two witnesses who were on the scene of the Tippett murder. First, Domingo Benavides, who was at the wheel of a truck across the street from the scene. As I was driving down the street, I seen this police car. We're sitting here, and the officer was getting out of the car, and apparently had been talking to the man that was standing by the car. The policeman got out of the car, and uh, as he walked past the windshield of the car, where the, they'd kind of lined up over the hood of the car, well, uh, the, this other man shot him. And, of course, he was reaching for his gun. And uh, so uh, I stand there, you know, just, I mean, sitting there <laughs> in a truck and uh, not in no big hurry to get out. Of course, I was sitting there watching everything. Uh, this man turned from the car then and uh, took a couple steps. Then uh, as he turned to walk away, well, he, uh, he was unloading his gun and he took the shells, held them in his hand, and as he took off, uh, well, he threw them in the bushes, more or less like nothing really trying to get rid of them. I guess he didn't figure he was caught anyway, so he just threw them in the bushes. But he, as he started to turn and walk away, well, he stopped and looked back at me. And uh, I didn't know if he figured, well, I'll just let this poor guy go, or he has nothing to do with it, or, you know, I'm not out to kill everybody, just, you know, whoever gets in my way, I guess. I give him enough time to get around the house, thinking he might have went in the house. I sat there for maybe a second or two and then uh, jumped out of the truck and run over. As I walked by, I didn't even slow down. I see the officer dead, so uh, I just walked in, uh, got in the car, and uh, I figured that would be the fastest way. In fact, I don't even know why I called him on the radio. I just figured now that it was the fastest way to, to get a police officer out. Hello, police operator. Go ahead. Go ahead, it says news news. Police. Hello, we've heard a shooting out here. What is it at? This is the news and police radio. What location? Between Marcellus and Buckley. It's a police officer. Somebody shot him. What's it? Four Street. It's in a police car. Number 10. Number 10. Hello. Police officer, did you get that? Police officer, 510 East Jefferson. Thank you. This is the news and police radio. Remain off the radio now. Well, now. Did several other people come up uh, later? Immediately afterwards. I mean, it was just, oh, after this, this people I asked to block away, like Mr. Calloway, he come up and uh, he says, uh, let's go get him or something. And then this cow pulled up right afterwards. And uh, so Calloway went over and took the gun's, uh, officer's gun out of his hand. But Calloway did go after him, didn't he? Yeah, Calloway took off to go try to catch him. Well, Eddie, uh... Uh, I was standing on the front porch of the used car lot that I worked on here, and all of a sudden I heard some shooting. In fact, I heard five shots coming from the direction behind the lot over on 10th Street there. Well, I come running off the side of the porch and out to the sidewalk here, and I looked up the street and I saw this man run through this hedge up here on the corner, and uh, I saw right away that he had a gun in his hand, and then he continued across the street coming in this direction. Well, when he got right across from me over here, just oh, about 30 yards or less, why, I called to him and just asked him, uh, hey, man, what the hell's going on? Well, that's just exactly what I wondered. I didn't know who he was at the time, of course. And uh, he looked my direction and paused, and almost stopped, and uh, said something to me, but I couldn't make out what he said. But he had this pistol in his hand, carried in what we used to in the Marine Corps call a raised pistol position, and uh, then he slowed down and started walking. Then I ran to the corner, 10th and Patton, and when I got there, I saw this squad car parked near the curb, and uh, then I walked around in front of the squad car, and this policeman was lying in front of the, the squad car. Tom, what about those uh, expended shells? Well, they were looking all over the place for evidence, I guess, and, and uh, taking fingerprints and what have you. So uh, I guess they was going to walk off and leave him. You know, not knowing they was there and uh, seeing I knew where they was at, I walked over and, and uh, picked up a stick and picked them up and put them in a Winston package. I think I picked up two and put them in a Winston package. And then uh, as I was walking back, I picked the other one up by hand, I believe. And uh, I picked them up with a stick, you know, keep them leaving fingerprints on because I, I figured they might need them. <laughs> 
The cartridges that Benavides picked up were positively identified as being fired in Oswald's revolver. But only one of the four lead bullets removed from Officer Tippett's body could be positively identified with that revolver by Illinois ballistics identification expert Joseph Nickel. In the examination of the projectiles, the uh, tests and the, and the evidence projectiles were not easily matched because of a certain mechanical problem with the weapon. The, the barrel was oversized for the size of the ammunition used since this was a weapon originally intended for uh, British use and was, was re-imported into America. Uh, this means that the bullet, instead of touching on all surfaces going down the barrel, actually wobbles a little bit as it goes through the barrel. As a consequence, uh, it is difficult to have it strike the same places every time as it goes through the barrel. So that the, the match on the, on the projectiles was extremely difficult. I did find, however, that on the driving edge of the lands, there were certain groups of lines which uh, I could match on one bullet. I wasn't able to identify the others, although there was nothing uh, to exclude them insofar as the class characteristics. All of them could have been fired in that particular weapon. One of the bullets that killed Officer Tippett was fired in Oswald's revolver. The other three could have been according to the ballistics identification expert. Ted Calloway went to the police station that night and made a positive identification of Oswald in a lineup. But Mr. Benavides did not do so. Eddie Barker asked him if he were sure Oswald did the shooting. Is there any doubt in your mind that Oswald was the man you had seen shoot Tippett? No, sir, there was no doubt at all, period. Uh, I could even tell you how he combed his hair and the clothes he wore and what have you to the detail. And if he had a scar on his face, I could probably tell you about it, but... Uh, you don't get things like that. The answer to this question, despite the problem of the ballistic evidence, is that Lee Harvey Oswald shot J.D. Tippett.